This is a sweet speaks. It is Saturday, and that means it's time to talk about this week in Sweden. From last Saturday until Friday yesterday. But before I do that, I have an announcement. Uh, in a few hours, I intend to live stream, and I intend to live stream at 10 p.m. Central European time, which means 9 p.m. London time, 4 p.m. New York time, 3 p.m. Chicago time. I'm not sure where it will be 2 p.m., but it will be 1 p.m. California time. And uh, well, the rest of you, I guess you just have to figure out which time that would mean to you. But anyway, I just wanted to, to make this announcement and now we can get started with this week in Sweden. So last Saturday, February 3rd, 2018, in Malmö, in Skåne, in the south of Sweden, during the night towards Saturday, there was a suspected gang rape. Four or five young men drugged a woman and brought her to an address in the neighborhood of Lindengen, where she reportedly was gang raped. On Sunday, February 4th, uh, it was reported that during 2017, a little more than 7,955 persons had their foreign college degrees approved by the Swedish Council for Higher Education. That is almost 10% more than in 2016. Many of these people uh, with approved degrees came from Syria, Iran and Iraq. And during 2017, 25,666 persons, including minors, applied for asylum in Sweden. This number does not include other immigration, for instance from the European Union and the Euro European Economic Agreement uh, countries. Rosanna Dinamarca, member of the Swedish Parliament for the Left Party, announced that she will not candidate to Parliament for the Left Party in, in the Swedish general election of the fall of this year. Uh, Dinamarca wrote on Facebook that the party had worked against her. She, who is of Chilean background, also criticized the left party for being dominated by men and white people. Uh, Salem in Södermanland, uh, to the south of Stockholm, uh, on, on, Saturday, on Sunday afternoon, one person reported a break-in that had happened earlier on, on the same day. According to unrecognized lo local sources, there is a wave of break-ins in Salem, a place that used to be nice and safe. In Jönköping, in Småland, in the southeast of Sweden, a man aged roughly 55 years old was sentenced to a fine for hate speech. In April last year, the man wrote that Sunni Muslims commit a large part of gang crime and rapes in Sweden. Among other things, he wrote that Afghans are to 80% Sunni Muslims and he called them and Somalis scum. The attorney, Lisa Hedberg, regarded his Facebook post to be, quote, degrading towards Muslims, Somalis and Afghans, alluding to their creed and national or ethnic origin, close quote. On Monday, February 5th, 2018, uh, Don Eliasson, who leaves his office as National Police Commissioner on February 15th, 2018, and becomes General, Director General of the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency on March 5th uh, on, in this year, uh, gets to keep his old pay of 160,000 Swedish kroner uh, per month, which is roughly 19,800 US dollars. He will then become the second highest paid head of a government entity in Sweden. Uh, his predecessor, predecessor as Director General of the Swedish Civil Con Contingencies Agency, Helena Lindberg, was paid 11,200 Swedish kroner, which is roughly 13,700 US dollars per month. In addition to his pay, Eliasson will also get a free car for use both in his work and uh, privately. Uh, during Monday evening, SVT, the license, uh, license payer funded public broadcaster in Sweden, uh, the SVT news program Aktuellt showed a segment on the ethnic background of uh, criminals and reported on a Norwegian study. According to Norwegian statistics, 4.5% of Norwegians without recent immigrant background were or had been suspects of crime, compared to 6.7% of immigrants and 11.3% of, of uh, children of immigrants. According to Synneve Andersen, researcher at Statistics Norway, 
there are internal differences among immigrants and children of immigrants in Norway. She said that refugees are overrepresented in crime statistics, while people who came to Norway to study or work are underrepresented. This took, uh, this took the large number of young men among refugees into account. Morgan Johansson, Sweden's Minister for Justice, said that he has no interest in doing a similar study in Sweden. Johansson said that, quote, To me, it doesn't matter if you are black or white. If you commit crimes, you should be locked up. That, that is my starting point, close quote. In Båstad, in Skåne, in the south of Sweden, early Monday morning, it was discovered that someone wrote Allahu Akbar at the front of Maria Kyrkan, St. Mary's Church, a medieval church which is now Lutheran. And on Wednesday, February 7th, in a debate article, Ilan Sade, leader of the Green Liberal Conservative Party Citizens Coalition, wrote that the Swedish government's proposed constitutional change will make it possible to censor media. Sade opposes this change. So do I. I have mentioned this constitutional change several times in this channel. The Swedish school inspectorate have reviewed how Swedish preschools work with gender equality. One of their conclusions is that preschool employees are not good enough at steering the so-called free play among children in a gender pedagog pedagogical direction. In Gothenburg, during Wednesday evening, 250 windows were smashed in two Gothenburg schools. Uh, on Thursday, February 8th, Elisabeth Svantesson, financial political spokesperson of the Moderate Coalition Party, said that the government should report the cost of immigration to Sweden. She also said that immigration to Sweden is unprofitable. In the neighborhood of Vivalla, in Örebro, in Närke, about 125 miles to the west of Stockholm, uh, it was reported that since a new welfare office opened in said neighborhood 10 months earlier, the number of welfare clients increased by 20%. Örebro municipality shared this as a success. In Stockholm, at a press meeting in the Swedish capital, the Kurdish militia confirmed that, Islam that Islamic State terrorists who are Swedish citizens are imprisoned in the north of Syria. They are considered terrorists and not prisoners of war. And yesterday, Friday, February 9th, it was reported that in a rehearsal movie published by the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency, Sweden Democrat leader Jimmy Åkesson was put, was put on equal footing with national socialists from the Nordic resistance movement. After this was reported, the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency replied that it was unintentional. The movie was removed from their YouTube account. And it was also reported that Rakhmat Akilov, the Stockholm terrorist, should never have had his application for asylum tried in Sweden. When he applied for asylum in 2014, he already had a visa to Poland. According to the Dublin Agreement, the EU country that issues a visa should try the application for asylum. The Swedish Migration Agency tried his application anyway. Uh, Akilov's application was turned down and he stayed in Sweden illegally. And that was some of the stories that came out of Sweden for the last seven days, this day not counted. Uh, so that's really all I have to say about that right now. And uh, I will return next Saturday and make another episode of, the, of This Week in Sweden. Uh, so until then, I would like to thank everyone who's, who supports my work. And if you like what I do, if you think what I do is important, please consider sending me a dollar or two, or ten, or a hundred. That's always greatly appreciated. And if you have the opportunity, take a look at the live stream at uh, 1 p.m. California time, 4 p.m. New York time, 9 p.m. London time, and 10 p.m. Central European time. That's 11 p.m. Helsinki time and so on. If you have the opportunity, take a look at that. Uh, so, until next time, have a nice day. And God bless.